Hello everyone and welcome to iLands Technologies presentation on high availability in Draytech routers. My name is Roy Panetta and I am the technical manager at iLand Technology. And today together with uh, Edward Eroy, who is also a network engineer at iLand Technology, we will give you an overview of the high availability feature on Draytech routers. This feature provides uninterrupted network access should a, a router hardware failure occur. High availability adds hardware redundancy to the network to provide maximum uptime for critical installations. So now I'll pass you on to Edward, who will tell you more about high availability in Draytech routers. Uh, thank you, Roy. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today's webinar, we, are, we will discuss a number of topics. First, we will look at the, what is high availability. Then we will look at which router supports high availability mode. Finally, we'll look at the two different high availability mode, which are the hot standby and active standby. The definition of high availability is the characteristic of system which aims to ensure a, a grid level of operation performance for a higher than normal period. One point to consider is that when is high availability required? This is required in mission critical network installations where network service cannot be interrupted due to hardware failure. This can apply to companies' headquarters, hospitals, utility companies, data centers, and etc. This is the main due to modernization, which has resulted in an increased reliance of, on the system. There are three principles that need to be considered for system design in high availability engineering. One is that it eliminates the single point of failure. This means adding redundancy to system ensure that failure of the component does not mean failure of the entire system. Another principle is reliable crossover. In redundant systems, the crossover point itself tends to become a single point of failure. High availability engineering must provide reliable crossover. Detection of failure as they occur is another principle. If the two principles above observed, then the user may never see a failure. I will now introduce a dritic router that support high availability mode. Dritec routers supporting high availability mode are shown here. The Vigor 3900 and the Vigor 2960 run in Linux OS, while the Vigor 2860, 2925, 2952, and 3220 routers run on dry OS, which is Dritec's proprietary operating system. In this webinar, we'll configure the DryOS ability using the Vigor 2925 router. We will discover the ability configuration using the Linux-based router in the near future webinar. Note that the Vigor 2860 ability is available to the next official firmware version, 3.8.4. If you wish to try it, just email us on support at tritech.com.au and we'll send you the beta firmware. The only constraint of using the high availability mode is that all the member router needs to be identical router models. The first sample is that Vigor 2925 N router will work with another Vigor 2925N router. Second is the Vigor 2925N works with Vigor 2925N+. Plus. The third is uh, Vigor 2925N uh, cannot work with uh, Vigor 2929N+, plus using high availability mode. 
we will look at some of the key features of high availability. Network administrator can create a high availability group to ensure that most eight routers and they will share the same with content filter. Only one router at a time, the primary will use the license. And then the primary router goes down, the, route, the secondary router will come up and take over the web content filter to provide continuous firewall protection for the LAN clients. Every configuration modification made on the primary router will be synchronized to the other group member. This ensures that one secondary router becomes the primary, your network will continue to work without interruption. The only way we will notice that the failure has occurred is via notification. The routers in the high availability group share the same dynamic DNS account. So when the primary router fails, the secondary router comes online, the DDNS profile will also be updated. So the network can still accessible via the DN same DNS domain. This works for both active and hot standby mode. Now I will present a video which provides a demonstration of hot standby mode. It shows how quick the network connection are recovered after the router failure. Today I'm going to demonstrate high availability with Traytech Vigor 20 and 25. This is the primary router and this is the secondary router. They all connect to the switch through their port 5. And this is LAN 2 and LAN 3. Later I will use PIN to test the connectivity and you will see high availability is working perfectly with multiple subnets. The two routers have different LAN IP address. For example, this primary router, LAN2, the IP address is 192.168.2.2 and the secondary router is 192.168.2.3 but when high availability is working, there will be a virtual IP address to serve the LAN clients. So this is my computer connected to LAN2 as you can see the IP address here. The IP address is 2.10 and the gateway is 2.1. So the virtual IP here is 2.1. I'm going to test the pin. The black window up here, I'm going to pin the gateway 192.168.2.1. And the white window here, I'm going to pin the Google DNS 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Let's start. So as you can see now, they are opening. So I'm going to turn off the power of the primary router and see how long does it take for the system to recover. So now let's start recovering. Okay, so uh, we lost the pin to the gateway Lane gateway from number 10 to number 23, so it's uh, 14 seconds for, for the system to recover. And how about the WAN? From number 8 to number 21, that's the same, 14 seconds. So once we lost the connection from the primary router, it takes only 40 se 14 seconds for the system to recover. So that was the power of case. How about the failback to the original router? And let's test. So again, I'll uh, pin the gateway, lane gateway, and this is the Google DNS. So now let's power back. We can check on the GUI. From the video, we saw that the internet connection is recovered in 14 seconds. Now we'll describe uh, how availability works. High availability utilizes the common address redundancy protocol, which is known as CARP, which shown the multiple hosts on the same location area network to share a set of IP addresses. 
its primary purpose is to provide failover redundancy, especially when used with the firewall and the routers. With TriTech routers configured for high availability, a common virtual IP address is shared between all the routers in the high availability group. This virtual IP address is used by all the LAN clients in the network as a default gateway. It means that the LAN clients do not have to be reconfigured with a new default gateway should the primary router fail. So the LAN clients only will only see the broadcast from the router to update the MAC address for the default gateway, which is the virtual IP address. This result is this result in minimum interruption for LAN clients. In the network topology shown in the diagram, although the primary and the secondary router have different LAN IP and MAC address, all the LAN clients use virtual IP as the gateway in IP address. For example, as well, have a highlighted here, the primary router has LAN 2 IP address of the 192.168.2.2 and the secondary router has the LAN IP address of 192.168.2.3. The virtual IP address setup is 192.168.2.1, and this is used by devices on the WAN2 as a default gateway. When the hardware failure occurs, the primary router goes offline. The secondary router will take over updates its MAC address to the LAN clients as shown here. So the virtual IP addresses will now have the MAC address of the secondary router. <clears throat> we'll now look at the high availability redundancy modes. The, there are two redundancy modes available, which are hot standby and active standby. You can choose either mode for your redundancy. With the hot standby mode, both primary and the secondary router share the same one source. To share the same one source, a modem with several internet ports or hub is required. For online status, the primary router is online. When the primary router goes down, the secondary router will come up and use the WAN connection to connect to the internet. The secondary router was synchronized to the primary router. For the active standby mode, the primary and the secondary router have different one sources. Both primary and secondary routers are online via their own one connections. The configuration is sync between the routers. This is not suitable for SMB users because they will spend another monthly payment on the secondary router one connections without using it. But on the 3900 and the 2960, it has the capability of the flexible high availability. It has a feature to load balance the traffic on the primary and secondary router one. We will now go through the key samples where we will configure the high availability standby mode using TriOS. High availability mode, high availability provides hardware redundancy to cli LAN clients. In hot standby mode, primary and the secondary router share the same one source. Usually only the primary router is online. When the primary router goes down, the secondary router will come up and use the same one connection and continue to provide internet service to the LAN clients. I will show you how to set up the Vigor router to use high availability in hot standby mode. On the primary router, select enable high availability, choose hot standby for redundancy method. Enable the LAN subnets to join the high availability mode 
any LAN subnet not selected will not be served as with the hardware redundancy. Under virtual IP, assign corresponding IP gateway for the subnet on the high availability. We also need to configure the high availability on secondary router. The priority value should be low, lower than the primary router. Other settings should be the same. Now we need to configure the LAN on the primary router. First, uh, first we set up the LAN IP address shown in the screenshot. This has no has to be different from the virtual IP address, and the LAN IP address of the secondary router again many router with the same priority ID. The IP address should be compared. So we suggest using the IP address with a lower number for the primary router. The gateway IP address shown as B in the screenshot should be the same as the LAN IP. And note that the parenthesis below indicates that the gateway IP provided to the LAN client will be replaced with the virtual IP. Repeat these settings on the secondary router and the LAN IP address should be different and larger than use, than that they use on the primary router. Here we set up a high availability on both routers. On both, we link up both routers. We need to configure other functions on the primary router so later we can see the configuration syn synchronized taking place. Your primary router is ready, settled, please proceed to the next step. Here we configure the one as a representative example. For the primary router, we configure the one IP address settings. Then confirm the one connection is up by viewing the online status page as shown here. The next step is the next step in configuring the primary router is to select the management interface LAN so that both routers can detect each other, deciding which one should be the primary and syn syncing the configuration. Since the router will communicate via management interface, it's required to use the port that belongs to the management interface LAN, uh, LAN 1 in this scenario. We can check for this information at under WAN and VLAN. This scenario, we can use the port 5 on both routers to use, so we can use internet cable to wire up to LAN port 5 on both routers. We may check the high availability status by visiting the page, uh, status page. The first time the two router link up, we can see that they are sync syncing and configuration from the primary router to the secondary, showing process on the secondary router. Note that the cache time indicates how long a config, a config. sync hasn't been taken place and the router will check if there are unsync modification when it reaches the time interval we configured previously. On the other hand, we may first to sync by clicking the sync button. When a sync is finished or the router have the same configuration, it will show the equal result. Now we may inspect the secondary router receiving the configuration from the primary router. In this scenario, we check the secondary router online status. Before syncing, we didn't configure the WAN. Now, seeing one and one two having a static IP indicates that it, it didn't receive our corresponding configuration. And the uh, disconnected HA means that the router is, is enabled. The one connection since the primary router in the high availability group is working. So the secondary router, it will doesn't need to know to be online now. You may also check other configuration on your secondary router.
You can also check the details page to get an overview of both routers in high availability group. This is the end of the presentation today. For more information, please visit our website at www.tritech.com.au slash support or you can send us an email at sales at tritech.com.au. Some points to take away from today's presentation is that high availability is available for a number of Drytech broadband routers. High availability provides uninterrupted network access should a hardware failure occur. Two modes of high availability can be used, hot standby and active standby. And the web content filter can be shared between all router in the high ability group. Now we have time to take any question from you, so feel free to type a question to us and hopefully we will provide the right answer for you.